everybody, I am That Nursing Prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the different types of isolation precautions. Now before we jump into isolation, I just wanted to say the very first thing we have to do with all of our patients is standard precautions. So standard precautions are not a type of isolation. They are the bare minimum that we are doing to protect our patients and ourselves from germs. So hand washing, hand hygiene, that is the number one thing you have to do with all your patients. This is not a type of isolation, it is just something you should be doing for everybody. This is standard precautions. Isolation precautions are a little bit different. The goal of isolation precautions is to keep everybody safe, the nurse, the patient, and any visitors. So let's talk about the different types of isolation. First up, we have contact isolation. So if you have a patient on contact isolation, you want to wear a gown and gloves. You want to have them in a private room so they shouldn't have a roommate. You want to limit their transportation so we don't want to take them out of that room unless we absolutely have to. And then we want to use patient dedicated or disposable equipment. So that could be like a blood pressure cuff or a stethoscope. Stuff that you don't want to use on anybody else because you don't want to spread those germs. That is for contact isolation. We have a mnemonic device to help us remember all the different reasons why somebody would be on contact isolation. And that is Mrs. Wee. So the M is for multi-drug, so multi-drug resistant organisms. R is for RSV. This is a respiratory virus that happens usually in little children and babies, usually in the wintertime. Skin infections, that's pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> Wound infections. So if you're in fundamentals and your first clinicals are in an assisted living or a nursing home setting, this is where you're going to find most of your contact isolation patients is because of wound infections. This is where you're going to see all like the cool stuff, like the stage 3 and stage 4 pressure ulcers. Those are your wound infections. That's going to put you on contact isolation. Enteric infections. So an example of this one would be uh, C. diff, Clostridium difficile. We don't want to spread that, right? So very, very important that we use proper contact isolation precautions when we take care of our patients with C. diff. And then finally, eye infections like conjunctivitis. So we know conjunctivitis is very, very contagious. So it is very, very important that we put these people on contact isolation to prevent the spread of that infection because we know it spreads fast. So now let's talk about airborne isolation. If your patient is on airborne isolation, you're still going to need your gown, you're still going to need your gloves, and they're still going to need to be in a private room. But some special things about airborne isolation, especially if your patient has tuberculosis, you're going to need to wear a mask and they're going to be in a negative pressure isolation room. So when I say mask, I'm not talking about those you know, disposable masks that you can grab out of the box that you keep at the nurse's station. That's not the kind of mask you need. You need a special mask called the N95, which is a mask that you need to be fitted for to make sure it fits on your face securely. So when you put on this mask, you need to go around and check the seal to make sure that it's on properly and it's not too big or it's not too small. And that's to keep yourself safe as the nurse. The way we can remember the things that require airborne isolation precaution is my chicken has tuberculosis. So N is for measles, C is for chicken pox, H is for herpes zoster. Herpes zoster is shingles, basically. So if your patient has shingles, they're probably going to be on airborne isolation precautions. And then T is for tuberculosis, of course, the big scary one we don't want to have. Now let's talk about droplet precautions. If your patient is on droplet precautions, you need to wear your gloves, your gown, and a mask. They need to be in a private room, and then you also need to wear eye protection, so goggles. If the patient is to leave the room for any reason, they also need to wear a mask. These diseases can be spread through coughing, sneezing, and even talking. Now I wanted to talk about PPE, which is your personal protective equipment. This is any equipment or clothing that you put on to protect yourself and the patient and to prevent the spread of germs. Now there is a proper order for putting on and taking off your PPE and I'm going to demonstrate that here. So the first step of donning our PPE, so putting it on, is hand hygiene. So of course we're going to wash our hands or hand sanitize. Then the next step is our gown. So let me grab my gown and let's put it on. And this will be located outside of your patient's room. 
Sometimes there's a separate cart, and then sometimes there's even a little um, thing that hangs on the door that has all of this equipment in it. One big thing about the gown that's a no-no that I see people do but they shouldn't do is this. They put their arms in, but they don't tie it, and they just kind of, all right, I'm going to do you know, my patient care. No, 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 no. That's not protecting you. That's not protecting the patient. You actually have to put the gown on and tie it. So there's two ties. There's a tie at the neck and a tie at the waist. So let's tie at our neck. Okay, and now let's tie at our waist. Okay, so the next step on our chart here is our mask. There's going to be a variety of different masks that you will see. Some are have like a hook around the ear, they're really easy. Some look like this where they have ties on the ends. There's going to be a variety. If you do have this kind with the ties on the ends, the blue part goes to your face and then there's a wire. There's a flexible wire on one end. That's the one that's going to go on the top. It goes on the top because it's going around your nose. And I'm going to talk a little bit louder. <laughs> just so you can hear me through the mask. So the first part of the string goes above your ear, like your glasses would. And then the second part goes around your neck. Okay, so now we have our mask. Our fourth step would be eye protection if necessary. So here's our eye protection, our goggles. Get it over my ponytail. There you go, our goggles. Then finally, our gloves. All right, so now we are all ready to go do patient care in an isolation room. What about the hairnet? Do we have to wear it? When do we wear it? If your patient is on isolation for something like bed bugs, that's when you're definitely going to want to wear a hairnet. You want to protect yourself, you don't want to get that, and you don't want to spread that. Normally, you don't have to wear the hairnet. That's just kind of a special thing, depending on what's going on with your patient. So I'm just going to take it off. Now, everything's done. We've done our patient care, and we're getting ready to leave the room. Now we're going to take off our PPE. And just like there was a proper way to put it on, there is a proper way to take it off. This is called doffing. Doffing. So the first step is to remove our gloves. And there is a correct way to remove your gloves because we don't want to touch anything that's possibly been in contact with anything, right? So you're going to take the dirty part of your gloves, here, pinch it, pull it with your other glove, then sneak your finger under this glove, you can see, and then pull it off. And so none of this part has been contaminated. This was touching your hand, the inside of your skin. All of this is dirty. So now we're gonna get rid of it, put it away. The next step is our eye protection. So we're gonna get rid of our goggles. Then our gown. So untie, untie. And just like taking off the gloves, we don't wanna to touch the outside. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull down and take our arm out and then do the same. And as we're doing this, I'm trying to show you, we're gonna roll away from us. So uh, rolling up anything that might have blood or drainage or fluid or anything on it so that we're not actually touching it. We're only touching the clean part that was touching our body and then we're gonna dispose of this. Then we'll do our mask after we leave the room. That's the big thing here. If your patient is on isolation where you require a mask, take it off after you leave the room. Everything else you take off as you're leaving the room right by the front door, but as soon as you walk out of the room, that's when we take off our mask. We get rid of our mask. And then final step, wash our hands. 
final point I wanted to make when taking care of our patients who are on isolation, and I'm talking any kind of isolation, contact, airborne, droplet, it doesn't matter. We need to make sure we address the emotional impact that being on isolation can have on them. It can cause them to feel socially isolated, they can become withdrawn and even depressed. So it's very important that when we interact with these patients that we are assessing those needs as well, not just the physical things going on with them, but checking in on them emotionally and uh, socially. Okay, you might be one of the only people that they interact with all day long. Okay, they might be socially deprived. So it's very important that you are very um, always friendly and welcoming and kind and you know be the thing that brightens their day. Be the nurse that you would want to have take care of you if you were in that situation. And that's just one thing I wanted to add because yes, we talk about all the germs and all the medical stuff and the important stuff, but remember nursing is a science, but it's also an art. And the art is how we care for our patients, how we advocate for our patients. And that's one of the things that we can do is to try and make their day a little bit better. So I hope this video was helpful. And if you have any questions or comments, let me know. If not, I'll see you on the next one.